the machine that we're going to be working with right here, this is the plasma. Okay, so this right here is our plasma machine. There's a, a couple of things I'll kind of go through on the front side of this right now, and then I'll kind of take you guys around the back, make life a little bit easier for us. So on here, we've got uh, really only a couple different things that we can kind of select from. Uh, we're gonna start off with this kind of far side right here. And I know this camera probably doesn't pick it up very well. We'll go ahead and we'll get you guys a little bit closer here. So on this side right here, we've got a couple different selections that we can kind of pick from uh, to kind of determine uh, what stuff we wanna do. If we go to the very top one right here, if we're cutting expanded metal, which if you guys know what expanded metal is, you've probably seen that on like barbecues and stuff. It's that metal that kind of has uh, big old holes, big gaps in it. And when we're cutting those things, it can be kind of, uh, it can be kind of a pain if we're just on a regular setting. Um, so this stuff, it has like an intermittent kind of thing to where you can kind of hit it. It's going to start, it'll cut it. When it doesn't have any metal underneath, it's not going to flow. Uh, you know, it's not going to flow that electricity until it touches that metal again and kind of creates that current. We are using electricity on this stuff uh, to be able to cut with everything. So uh, we are using electricity. Um, that's kind of our main source of power. Uh, and so we want these things to kind of create an arc, sort of like arc welding, except we want to do the opposite. We actually want to cut with this stuff. Um, this one, the second one down right here is going to be our kind of standard cut. Um, when I get to the gun, I'll kind of show you the differences between this one and that one right there. Uh, but there's a little trigger that we're going to pull. You pull that trigger and it's going to uh, allow the electricity to flow. It's going to make a cut. Uh, this one right here is a gouging. So if you don't want to actually cut the metal, but you want to kind of gouge some of that material out. Um, sometimes we do that if we're, you know, trying to, you know, make repairs in something. If we've got a crack in something, we don't want to necessarily cut it, but we want to kind of gouge out where the crack is. And then we're going to fill that back in with a weld. Uh, but we don't want to just weld on the top. It's going to help get us that penetration. Typically going to use that with like thicker metal, not thin stuff. Uh, and this bottom one is just kind of got the, it's a little plasma cutter, very similar to this one. Uh, the difference is, is on this one, you have to hold the trigger. On this locking one, you click the trigger once and it's gonna continue making that cut. And I'll show you guys the differences between those right there. If we go over to this other side, kind of right here, we've got, you guys can see, making sure it was working, right? So I don't know if you guys can read that if, it's, if my camera's pulling that up, but there's a little amperage rating right here. Uh, and you can actually turn this little dial and it's gonna increase and decrease your amperage. If you're working with thicker metal uh, versus thinner metal, that's where we're gonna kind of adjust this thing up. We're gonna adjust it down. Uh, we can kind of play with it. Some of the settings that you can get into uh, right here, you can adjust kind of your air pressure. Uh, and uh, we, we typically don't mess with that. Typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our amperages and we're gonna sele select, you know, which setting, like what material we're kind of cutting. Uh, or is it expanded metal? Are we trying to gouge? And then do we wanna cut? and hold the trigger or cut and just let the trigger go and let it do its thing. Uh, I'm going to show you these two today. I'm not going to show you the gouging uh, and the other one because we just typically don't use these. Uh, for what we do, we're not, we're not using those whole, a whole lot. But there's a lot of different things that we can do. I'm going to take you guys around to the back side here. Try to get you in here. Okay, so on the back side of this thing, you'll notice we have a little air hose. We've got a little power cable right there. Um, so we've got to plug this in. We plug it into to 208 power. Uh, these things can do, you basically have to have uh, the 208, 230, 240. Those are all generally the same power uh, and they're gonna be able to plug it in. Some plasma cutters you can plug into like a 110 outlet. Some of them you can't, um, but this one, okay, we just plug it into 220. Same things that we would plug a welder into. Um, the airline is gonna be important. Um, that uh, that's going to help make sure that we actually have air pressure that's going to basically push through. Uh, and as we, you know, create this electrical current, it's going to heat up that metal. Uh, and then it's going to basically, that air is just going to blow that molten metal out of the way. Uh, we actually call it a plasma cutter because it actually turns this uh, material into plasma, which is actually the fourth state of matter. And I am really crooked on my, I'm trying to hold my phone up at the same time. Um, so with the, the plasma cutter, we're creating the fourth state of dimension, right? We have solids, liquids, gases, and then plasma is just superheated material. 
Uh, and this thing is going to heat up this material really quickly. You're going to find there's a difference between uh, the oxy fuel cutting and this one and the amount of time that it takes to actually heat and start cutting uh, and to make the cut. Uh, and you're probably also going to notice a difference in the quality. That little switch right here, you flip that thing like that, it's going to turn off the main power. You turn it back on, it's going to give you power back. Stand there. There we go. Um, so that's essentially what's going on in the back. We've got that thing, uh, that switch in the back there. Um, and then we've got uh, some cables that are also up in the front here. One cable we've got is going to lead to our little gun. This is what's actually going to be doing the cutting. And the other one, kind of like shield and metal arc welding, we're going to have pretty standard ground clamp. Got to make sure you clamp that onto something. Uh, to be able to get this stuff to work. Now, there's a couple things with these parts and pieces that I'm going to show you. Uh, see if I can get this in. Kind of in here. So, on the tip of this gun, there is a little handle here. We've got to flip this thing up, and then you've got to pull that trigger right there. We don't pull this thing into the air. We want to make sure that we're setting it down on our metal before we actually pull this trigger. If I don't lift that up, it kind of locks it, prevents you from, from pushing that trigger down. What that does is if you pull this trigger in the air, and I see people do this all the time, it really frustrates me because it really wears down parts quick. It's going to destroy some parts that are on the inside, and then we're going to have to replace those. Uh, there's a couple different pieces that are on here. And I'm going to take this off, and I'll probably switch the angle a little bit for you. Uh, you're going to see there's some parts and there's some pieces on the inside of here. Now notice when I pulled this thing out, I don't know if you saw this machine right here, we have this little yellow orangish kind of light that came on. Um, what that's telling us is that there's a fault code, meaning that something is kind of wrong with this machine. If I try to turn this on and I don't have air, it's going to throw a fault code. If I try to, you know, start this thing and my ground isn't uh, there, typically it's going to throw that fault code. If I'm depressing the trigger when I turn on this power because uh, it's getting depressed, it's going to throw this fault code and you're not going to be able to do anything with that. Uh, the way that we clear that, we have to actually put everything back together here. Oop. The way we clear that, shut the machine off, leave it off for a couple seconds turn it back on, that fault code isn't coming up anymore. So if you ever see these on these, and these hypotherms that we're working with right here, these are pretty much the standard that you see. Other companies make them, uh, but the hypotherms are really like the kind of top of the line. Any companies, a lot of high schools, different things like that, they're running hypotherms uh, just because they are a pretty good quality. They last a long time. And uh, in my opinion, they're kind of the ones that are kind of leading the industry. So we're gonna shut that off real quick. I'm going to get uh, myself repositioned here. And let's see what this thing off. And there's a couple different pieces. McKenna, it's really hard to hear you. Let me try this. How's that? Better? better yeah looking i'm looking away from my mic i'm trying to get my mic in in position here so i apologize for any any issues if you get if i lose me again just interrupt me so that way you guys don't miss out on anything okay so on this gun there's like some pieces that are on the inside here and i'm just going to kind of pull all of them apart so that way we can kind of see them that's not it I dropped one. We'll get this out of the way right now. Okay. So there's really four pieces that that, that gun, that kind of tip is kind of made of. Um, and uh, kind of the first thing that we've got, this little plastic piece right here. Typically, we don't have to replace this piece. They typically aren't going to get damaged unless things kind of overheat. Uh, this piece is called the swirl ring. 
So that swirl ring uh, really kind of takes that gas as it's flowing through this plasma and just kind of creates a nice, you know, kind of almost like a tornado effect where it's just kind of swirling that gas around helps make sure that we get a nice good cut. Uh, if something overheats, typically we'll have to replace this, but most of the time we don't have to mess with that at all. Um, the next thing that goes in this little piece right here, if I can get my hand out of the way and I can show you guys, maybe I can get it up closer. That is called the electrode, okay? Uh, these things will tend to fail pretty quickly. If we arc that in the air uh, or if we're cutting and we're just cutting you know, at a high amperage and we don't need that, uh, these things are gonna wear down because this is kind of where that electricity is flowing through uh, is in this electrode. And if we don't have settings right, if we kind of uh, mess around with those things or we're arcing in the air, if we've got uh, an oxygen supply that has water or moisture or any kind of debris in there, it's gonna wear these things down as well. Uh, so we wanna make sure we have good clean supply to help make sure that that electrode stays in good condition. You will have to replace these things. I mean, they are gonna wear out the more you cut the more they're gonna wear down. Um, so just understand that that is one of the parts that we do replace quite often. I wanna say these things are around five or six bucks for each one of these things. And you can burn up one of these tips in a matter of seconds if you're arcing in the air and not getting that electricity to flow through the ground. And what happens, and kind of the next piece that we have is this little nozzle right here, okay? So this nozzle and this electrode kind of sit in each other right there. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, some of these tips, let me grab a real bad one here. Some of these tips are like really torn up. If I can, yeah, right up there. There's like metal and stuff that's kind of burnt out uh, on these tips. We have to end up taking these things out. We got to replace them. Um, this one's a used one right here as well. Uh, but this one's not as bad as this one right here, okay? Um, there's, this one's just kind of really blown out. It's got a lot of stuff just kind of wrong with it. So we're just gonna kind of set that off to the side. Um, we do have to replace them. If you look at the, the tip on this one, on this electrode holder, okay, you can see it should be a kind of a nice flat surface and this, there's kind of an indention here. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. There's kind of an indention there and um, it's just not, uh, it's not as good. It's not in as good a condition you know, as, you know, a, a brand new one. You're going to notice these things when they start to fail on you. You're going to know that they're failing because your cuts are going to be pretty bad. Uh, and we're going to see these things aren't, these two pieces that I have here are not brand new, uh, but we're going to see what kind of quality cuts we can get and, uh, and what we're going to have. So to put these things in, these two pieces, right, the nozzle and that electrode, those two pieces are the pieces that are going to wear down the quickest. You're going to replace these things more often. Uh, and I think the nozzles are about five bucks. I think the electrodes are about six. Really kind of depends, but you can spend 10 bucks and you can burn through it pretty quickly. Uh, so the price on these things tend to add up. So when we're putting these things together, we kind of have our swirl ring, our electrode and our nozzles kind of all together here. Uh, we've just got this uh, little retaining cup right here. These things you typically don't have to replace. Um, those things are actually gonna thread on. All those other pieces just sit in there this piece threads on and if we can get this in here, if you could see this little, little, you know, piece that kind of comes out, as we tighten this thing down, it pushes that piece back. And that's what actually created that little fault code for us is that it basically, you know, it's like a little electrical, you know, button. So that when you have this thing on, it presses it, it tells it, hey, this thing is, is pretty much good to go. Uh, if you have these things off, it's gonna throw the foot throw the fault code on your machine and you're gonna have to clear that by shutting it off and turning it back on. Uh, the last piece that we have, this piece is called your shield, okay? So this is your shield. Sometimes you might hear the term cup, uh, but shield is really the most appropriate term on these things. Um, these ones are gonna kind of protect that nozzle uh, from all the stuff that we have. And basically that's all the kind of parts that we're really worried about. Uh, on top of this, uh, this plasma here. There are a couple different types of shields that we can, we can work with. This one is what we consider a drag shield. Uh, if you notice, there are some lines, there are some notches that are kind of cut out on the tip here. If I can maybe orient this the right way. You see how some parts are raised up and then it's kind of lowered down a little bit. 
Uh, on this one, there's actually three different lines. Some of them might have four different, uh, different style cups for different machines, uh, but this one's called a drag tip. Now, the advantage to this is in a handheld unit like this, we can literally take this thing, we can set it on top of, of our metal, we can pull that trigger and we can just cut that. If we wanna cut a straight line, we can do that. If we wanna cut squiggly lines, we can do that. You can do you know, pretty much anything you want um, with these things. Um, but if we wanna make designs and stuff like that, that's where like that CNC machine really kind of comes in handy because it, it makes it to where it's accurate. It makes it to where you don't have to worry about that. And on those ones, we're gonna have these machine uh, or mechanized uh, shields on them. Uh, and these mechanized shields, there's a bigger opening in the front. There's no notches for you know, us to kind of spread or to kind of, you know, uh, to be able to set this thing on here uh, and to be able to cut. What happens when we cut is there are sparks that come out and on this drag tip, those little notches that are on that tip of those things allow those sparks to come out instead of up into that gun. With this one, we use these with uh, CNC machines. Uh, there's no need to actually drag it because that CNC machine retains a particular height with these, with the, uh, when it's running. Uh, so it's not gonna dive it down into that. It's not gonna have sparks that are gonna come up. Uh, it's all gonna be controlled by the computer. Uh, and so there's no need to have a drag tip. In fact, we don't want the drag tips on there. Uh, we want these uh, mechanized shields on them. Uh, a lot of these guns can be interchangeable. You can use them on a CNC machine and you can use them uh, on a handheld machine. It's just basically you're gonna change out uh, that tip. We do have different uh, nozzles that can go in. So these things right here, again, they're the nozzles. Uh, we have 85 amps, we have 45 amps, we've got 65 amps, uh, and they're just gonna do a little bit better job of cutting like thicker material. The thicker the material, the higher the amps you want. And these things are gonna kind of hold uh, a little bit better when we're doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but all those parts are gonna be interchangeable on this gun. So you can kind of pick and choose different sizes uh, that you want for the operation that you're actually doing. Uh, here's some tips. Uh, this one right here is a drag tip. You'll notice we've got a lot of material kind of right on the edge right here. And that material right there is just slag that has been, as we've been cutting, it just kind of builds up into there. It blocks that so it doesn't allow the sparks to kind of fly out. Uh, and then, so sometimes we just kind of clean those off when they get torn up where we'll place these cups. We don't have to do that very often um, and arcing it in the air or anything like that. That's not gonna cause these things to really kind of fail. This is just kind of wear and tear after you know so much time. Uh, this tip right here, this uh, mechanized tip, uh, there's just a lot of you know debris that gets kind of collected on these things. There are little orifices on these as well. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. Yeah, I think you could see that. So those things help allow for that airflow to kind of circulate, uh, help kind of keep things cool, help blow that molten metal out. Um, these drag tips are gonna have that same thing. They've got holes, you know, kind of on the outside. Those holes can get clogged up. We wanna make sure we clean them every once in a while uh, to make sure that they're operating uh, and letting that air flow through there. So I think that's everything on the tip. What I haven't said, I know what I haven't said, but I've said it a couple of times, uh, is the CNC machine. Uh, does anybody know what CNC stands for? Computerized numeric control. That's correct. Um, sometimes you might hear the term computer numeric control. Really, it's the same thing. Uh, basically, what a CNC machine does is it's gonna plot grid points and it's gonna tell the machine to go to those different grid points and to cut or not cut uh, as far as like a plasma cutter. For those that have had the MechAg one class, that laser that we worked with, that we cut uh, with our wood, that stuff is a CNC machine as well. So those things are gonna do very similar stuff, okay? And that's kind of where that programming, that's where the design, the artwork and that stuff really comes in. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna have you guys working on uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, you know, we'll be working on those designs, learning that software, uh, because it is software. It's hard to design. It's hard to kind of get things to kind of, you know, how do we cut these things out? How do we design that? But the nice thing is when you're designing these types of things, it works on all different machines. If you have, we have an Arclight CNC plasma table here. Uh, if you have a Torchmate, maybe you had one in your high school, maybe you had a plasma cam. Although they're different programs, they're really the same process, no matter which one you use. And it also applies to the laser. We got this laser last year. I've never messed with a laser. 
but I've done stuff with plasma, very easily able to transfer over uh, to the laser, designing things, cutting things out, uh, doing different stuff. So um, if we learn one of them, it's really gonna kind of help us with all these other ones. Uh, but today we're kind of focusing really on just kind of the handheld stuff, okay? Um, some nice things about this uh, plasma cutting, get my, my mic set up a little bit better here. The nice thing about the plasma cutting is that you can cut uh, all different types of metal. So we can do stuff like uh, mild steel. We can do stuff like aluminum. You can't do that with uh, the oxy fuel welding or oxy fuel cutting. We can also do stainless steel. It's going to cut these things uh, pretty nice. Okay, depending on our settings, depending on how much airflow that we have coming out, um, you know, you can kind of adjust that. For us, we really kind of cut, you know, for the most part, you know, thinner metal is where we really use uh, the plasma. And that's really where these things shine. Um, if you remember kind of cutting the uh, thin metal with the oxy fuel rig, you can do it, uh, but it, it maybe doesn't get a clean cut. It doesn't, re you know, it's not as smooth. Uh, so that's where that plasma really kind of comes in handy. Now on our CNC machine, we can cut some thicker stuff. We've got some bigger amps, we've got a bigger machine. Uh, we can cut, we've cut on that table up to one inch thick plate. Uh, but you know, that it, you're really limited on the thickness depending on the machine that you have. Uh, the oxy fuel torches that we were cutting with a couple weeks ago, you can very easily cut with a tip that we had on, you can cut up to two inch thick metal. Okay, so solid metal, you can cut up to two inch. Very difficult to get a plasma to cut up to that height or to cut up to that thickness. Uh, we're gonna get, we got a plate here we're gonna cut that's pretty thick. It's uh, about five eighths of an inch thick. So we're gonna see what this thing does. We can kind of mess with some of the settings on there. Uh, and uh, we'll do this from there. So let me get my head gear set up. Where is that? So on these things, you do have to have a shade five lens. Uh, that's no different than the oxy fuel welding. So we're going to have the one camera set up so that way you can see uh, you know, kind of clear. Again, the light through the camera is not going to be a big deal for you. We'll get that stuff set up there. We'll get rid of that glare. All right, so you can kind of see a little bit in that one. Uh, hopefully this is a little bit lighter than the oxy fuel stuff that we did last week. I kind of changed up the stuff a little bit um, so that we can see. But this light, right, it is, you know, pretty bright if you're using it, whether handheld, whether you're on, um, whether you're uh, working with uh, um, the handheld or the CNC machine, right? You don't want to stare at this light because it will, uh, could burn your eyes, could give you that arc flash, just like welding. Um, and we got our setting up. We're going to go, I'm going to actually turn on this machine. So when you turn on the machine, this thing isn't going to do anything until you pull this trigger right here. Um, so no electricity is going to be flowing. We've got our ground clamp that's attached to our table. It's a metal table. We have metal on top of it. We've got little slats here that we can kind of cut in. Um, that is going to be uh, pretty good. And that's kind of what we want. Now, you guys have seen before where we did kind of that uh, the cut and we wanted to cut a straight line where we used a piece of angle iron and we kind of held the torch up against there. This thing is kind of the same way. You could put a piece of angle iron on any side. You can drag this thing, make a cut, and you can use that to have a straight edge to where you're going to actually be able to make that cut uh, and not have to worry about uh, it being crooked. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a piece of angle iron here with me piece of square tubing, I can use this thing, I can hold this stuff down, and I can make that cut. Uh, we're going to actually probably try to do one right now. Uh, we're on the one where we have to hold this trigger down. If I let go of this trigger, it's going to stop my cut. Uh, so we're going to try this out right now. Get the cord untangled. This one doesn't run the whole length of this stuff. But we're just going to make a little cut. I'm going to start kind of right off on my edge right here. Uh, and then I'm just going to click this trigger. I'm going to pull it down and I'm just going to drag this thing across. Okay.
I noticed you're not wearing gloves. You don't have to wear gloves for this. You can if you want, but this stuff is it actually because it heats this stuff up. It's a little warm right here, but notice I'm holding it right here. It's not hot at all. Um, you know, sometimes it's a good idea because you can like right at the very tip, it is kind of warm, uh, but this stuff kind of cools down pretty quickly. Um, if you want, you can have like sleeves on and stuff where, you know, the UV rays aren't as bad, like on your skin. Uh, it's more of like the sparks kind of flying at you and stuff. Uh, but this stuff, you'll notice those sparks kind of went down. You notice how quickly it starts cutting. Um, we don't have, you know, any of those issues. But, um, so if you want to wear gloves, you know, sometimes it's a good idea because, you know, if you end up touching this part right here, that's going to be a little bit warm, but like where I'm at, it, 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 because it heats this stuff up so quickly, it really focuses that heat right where you're cutting uh, and we don't have any issues. There's one thing you'll probably see on here. Um, there's some kerf or some slag that's on the, the back side of this right here. And that resulted because I was probably cutting maybe a little bit too, uh, too slow. I uh, probably need to cut a little bit quicker. Uh, and then also, I'm at 40 amps right now, so that's probably pretty good. That's what we're doing. I'm just going to do a freehand one. Maybe I'll use this thing actually to help me out to make that cut. So we'll do this one and we'll drag this thing kind of across. We're going to go a little bit quicker with this pull. Okay, so I'm going to pull this thing quite a bit faster here. So you see how fast that thing cuts. This cut is probably, get you guys in this camera here. Um, we're still getting kind of that curve there. I would say that's probably a result of probably our tip uh, need to be replaced. We burnt through a lot of these tips and we don't have, those are like the cleanest ones that I could find. Um, and so we're, you know, we have a little bit of an issue with that. But, you know, that stuff is not hard. I kind of just banged it against the table and it got all that kerf off of there. So we don't have any of that stuff there. Um, if you got a brand new tip, everything's going to come in and it's going to be clean. But that didn't take very much to kind of clean that stuff up. Uh, but it's fast. Did Dad know about Leo Lundin? What was that? No. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, you could do the same thing. You can cut uh, aluminum with this stuff. And we're not even going to change any of these settings on here. We're going to leave these settings the same. We're going to go through. We can make a cut on the aluminum. Uh, aluminum has a tendency to have a lot more of that kind of slag at the bottom. You can kind of see that. Um, on these things, you can actually introduce different gases. You can have a pure oxygen. Um, we're just using compressed air, so a compressor, and that's typically what we do. Uh, if you're cutting a lot of aluminum, uh, you can add different gases in there. Some people do nitrogen, some people do oxygen um, to kind of help clean those things up a little bit, but nothing that, you know, a little, uh, little grinding won't kind of take that stuff off or a little, you know, even like a sanding pad will kind of take that stuff off that bottom uh, and make a nice clean cut. With aluminum, if you try to do uh, oxyfuel cutting on aluminum, the way aluminum works is it, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, it uh, transfers heat very rapidly. Uh, and so when you have heat on one side, if I try to heat up here, uh, it's going to transfer that heat across that metal pretty quickly. Uh, if I'm doing this on you know, a, an oxyfuel weld, I'm going to be cutting and I'm going to heat up an area and it's going to be you know, like hot, you know, like right here. And it's going to slowly kind of make its way across that metal. And heat is going to always transfer across that metal. No matter what, heat's going to transfer. On mild steel, it goes very slowly. So if I heat up this corner and melt it, it's going to take a lot longer for that heat to kind of come over to there. And it's going to also kind of make it to where it's not as hot. So it's never going to get that hot. Aluminum is going to do this really rapidly. So when I'm trying to cut something here on this side, that heat is going to very quickly transfer down in that corner. Uh, and to get this thing to melt, I really have to heat up that whole piece there. 
with oxy fuel welding, it's very tough. You don't get clean cuts. Everything's kind of, you know, just kind of sloppy. That whole piece of metal is hot and almost all starts to kind of melt, be real kind of malleable. With the plasma, because it's a superheated gas and we're melting this stuff rapidly, it doesn't give it a chance to really transfer that heat across before it's already up to temperature and ready to cut. So that's kind of one of the big advantages of this is that we can cut uh, aluminum with it. We got a piece of stainless steel. Stainless steel is pretty much like mild steel, except it's got some, you know, chromium and nickel added into it to give it that stainless property. Um, Oxyfuel cutting can do it, but it's a lot easier with the. Uh, it's a lot easier with the plasma. So I'll show you guys that real quick here. You might have noticed some sparks a little bit more kind of flying up. We have to go a little bit slower because this stuff is uh, quite a bit stronger. Uh, but again, you can kind of see it's a nice kind of smooth cut. We got some kerf on the bottom of this thing, but nothing that we can't, uh, can't just kind of chip off or take like a little sanding wheel to it and kind of clean that off. There's very little, very little of that. We call that dross. There's very little dross on this stuff right here. Um, so it can cut these things. It can do you know, different types of materials. It does it quickly, it does it effectively, um, and does a pretty good job with that. We're gonna try to cut this uh, thick piece right here. Uh, again, this is about five eighths inch thick material. So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna actually increase my amperage. I went to 70 amps on this thing, okay? We need, we got thicker material, we need more, you know, more power to be able to kind of cut through these things. So we'll use this uh, piece of square tubing as a guide. So on this one, you can kind of see the cut that we made. Okay, it's pretty clean, but the one thing we have, is a little bit of an angle. Sometimes when we get through thicker stuff, if you're tilting this gun from one side to the other, it's gonna get that angle in there. Uh, the CNC machine, you tend to will do that if you're making real tight uh, turns, if you're going real fast around turns and stuff, you'll see it kind of angling out. And the thicker metal really kind of protrudes that. So we'll try to make one more cut. We'll try to make sure that this cut is gonna be square. So that way we have a nice flat cut. Still, I was holding that gun and you could see we got a little bit of that angle there. Um, probably need a, uh, maybe a bigger amp tip to be able to cut through those things to help, you know, make sure that we're pushing it through. But nonetheless, it still cuts through a piece of 5 8 piece of metal pretty quickly. And you got very little dross or that slag that's on that bottom there. Very easy to clean up. Um, probably take a grinder to that and cut it, but fairly smooth on that front end right there. Uh, you do have to go a little bit slower, obviously. It's a thicker piece of material. Um, so we do have to go slower with this. Um, I'm going to switch this uh, machine down to that locking one. And so what we're going to be able to do now is we're going to be able to just click this trigger once. And then we can let it go. And then when this machine is done and it gets to the end of the metal, it's going to automatically cut itself off. And so if you don't want to do this, if you're doing like a long distance, you want to cut a real long sheet, um, sometimes you want to just kind of hit that trigger you don't want to have to hold it and you want to be able to drag this thing across you might be walking across with it um, to be able to make that nice smooth cut and so that's where that locking uh, one kind of comes in my table is all screwed up all sorts of stuff on here. you'll notice that when i'm cutting i'm always making sure my cut is in between this metal so that way we don't get this stuff on the table uh, where it's going to make it like unlevel so always when you're making cuts make sure you're doing it in between the slats so we should just be able to pull this trigger. I've let go of my trigger there. I'm making my cut. And then when I get to the end, it automatically cuts those things out. It stops the power from flowing because uh, it senses that there's a break in the electrical current there. Uh, and so once it gets to the end of your cut, it's done, it goes away. Uh, which one you prefer is really kind of up to you. I went a little bit slower, so I had quite a bit of dross uh, on this one. 
um, cause I went a little bit slower. If I was doing a longer piece, that's where that one really kind of comes to an advantage. Uh, but most of the time we just set this thing up with a standard cut, uh, where we're going to basically go out and, uh, you know, just hold that trigger as you're making it small stuff. That's a lot easier just to do that and control it manually. Um, there is a different style yeah, of gun. Yeah. Go ahead. And then, um, she eats that. Pretty sure Kelly. And then she has another one. Do you mean to be talking, Kelly? I don't think she does. Um, so, there are the the gun is uh, typically a little bit different. On this one, you'll notice it's kind of got an angle. It's really designed for your hands. On the ones on the plasma, it just kind of comes straight out. Um, those aren't designed to be handheld. You could theoretically handhold it and it comes straight down, but it's meant to be clamped um, in, um, it's meant to be clamped inside uh, of, of, the, of the machine, of the gantry system that's gonna kind of run around. Have I, got, have I shown you guys the, the plasma, the CNC plasma? I don't think I have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you over to it. I'm just going to kind of show you with my camera real quick uh, that machine, kind of what it looks like. I'm not going to talk during that time because I'm going to walk away from my mic, uh, but I'm going to go over there. I'm going to show you guys that real quick, and I'll come back. Okay, bring you guys back in here. Um, so on that plasma, you kind of saw like we have a computer that's attached. It's got its own dedicated plasma uh, that's attached to it as well. Uh, and then um, the whole gantry system, you saw the little torch tip that I kind of pointed to, uh, where it's just kind of straight down. It's really the same exact thing as that handheld. Uh, the difference is we're using these uh, mechanized shields instead of these drag tip shields right here. Okay, so that's kind of the biggest difference that we have um, you know, with those, but otherwise they're really kind of the same thing. Uh, but instead of you controlling it, that computer is going to do it, uh, do that work for you. Uh, and it's going to make it easy. The tough thing on that plasma on that CNC is getting the design, getting that artwork, getting your lines, right. Uh, and making sure you know what's going to pop out and what's not, what, where the negative space is. Uh, sometimes if we're doing letters, you might have parts and pieces of the letters that drop out. And so we have to be kind of cautious of that. Uh, and so really a lot of the work on the design stuff really kind of works in the computer where you're actually putting that stuff together. Uh, can I, um, what do we need to beagle to operate the plasma cutter? Yeah, yeah, it should, it should say be able to. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, beagle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we like dogs here. Uh, <laughs> you like dogs? I like dogs. I love dogs. Yeah, uh, I don't like cats. Oh, that's not terrible. A, I love cats too. <laughs> not, not, a, not a big cat person. Um, yeah, so what should, what was the question again? To be able to operate the plasma cutter? So that, that's uh, the, the things that we need to plug in. We need electricity and we need air. We need an air supply, whether that comes from a tank or like a, compress, a compressor uh, that's, you know, just kind of compressing, you know, the air in the environment. Uh, you need to have really those two things. Uh, and that's okay. like an, that brings me to another disadvantage. And I know I talked about a couple of them, uh, but versus like oxy fuel cutting. With oxy fuel cutting, we have a cart. Um, we can have those things attached to a truck. Uh, you can roll them on a cart. You can put them anywhere, and you can start cutting and and you can do stuff. If you're out in the middle of a field, right, you can take an oxy fuel torch and you can cut stuff in the middle of a field. You don't have to worry about that. If you're trying to do plasma cutting, you're going to have to have a generator that's going to generate that electricity. You're also going to have to have a compressor. Uh, that's going to be compressed air because without those two things you're not going to be able to cut obviously you've got to have the machine and you've got to have you know the parts of the machine and all that kind of stuff right that's not really what that one question is looking for that one question is like what kind of outside of machine what do we need? 
and the two inputs are electricity and compressed air. Um, also, why should we never pull the plasma when it's not touching metal? So on these, let me see, this electrode right here and this nozzle right there. When this, when you're, you know, taking that tip and if you're touching it with that drag tip, you, you touch it on the metal, you drag it, right? Right. Uh, what that does is that gives you the arc gap essentially that you want. If you think about like shield and metal arc welding, it gives you that arc gap and it allows that electricity to basically flow from your electrode through your nozzle and then down to your metal to make that cut. If you don't have that metal, what's going to do is it's going to arc on itself. And between these two pieces, it's going to arc on those things. And that's where you're going to get a lot of this wear and tear on these tips here, where they're just going to kind of wear down on those two pieces. Uh, and you can destroy a tip within a matter of a couple of seconds, if you're just sitting there and you're clicking the trigger. And I see, I've seen students do it and it, it bugs me so much, but I've seen students do it because they want to see it arc. And you see a little bit of a flash, but the electricity is going out and it's going back through between these two tips. Okay, so always, always pull the trigger when you're on that metal. So that way you're completing that cycle. Uh, if your ground clamp isn't connected, it's going to do the same thing. You're going to have the same issue uh, where it's going to arc on itself and it's not going to cut. And you're like, what's going on? Now, uh, it's your ground clamp is not connected. You got to make sure that you connect uh, that ground clamp uh, as you work it. So. Um, and then last question, what is, is the drag shield, is that the one that covered, you covers your eyes or what is that? Um, no, the, what, what you should have on your eyes is like a, I, what I've got on top of my hat right here. These are cutting glasses, right? They've got that, these are shade five. So they got that green tint to them. That's what's going to cover your eyes. The drag tip, right here versus uh, this mechanized, well, I call it a drag tip, but it's a shield, right? It's not, I mean, sometimes you hear the term tip and I kind of, you know, I get in that mode, uh, but that shield is really kind of covering your electrode, right? So it's covering your electrode and your nozzle from having a bunch of stuff coming back into it, any sparks that are created and whatnot. Uh, and then just the difference between the two is that this one on the top, you drag it, that's gonna be on a handheld. This one's gonna be on a CNC machine. Okay, and these ones, the CNC machine, right? The machine, the mechanized tip, it hovers it above the metal. So it's not actually touching the metal. The machine will go down, it'll touch the metal, it'll come back up uh, and that's gonna set the height that it is away from that metal. And it just, you know, basically just moves around, makes its cuts, does what it needs to. Very difficult for you to do the same thing. That's why we have the drag tips because then you don't have to think about that. Just leave it on that metal. You don't have to worry about trying to hover that above that and keep a certain distance. Theoretically, you could do these with your handheld ones, but you don't want to. Just get the drag tips, okay? They're easier, they work a lot better. Uh, and it saves these tips when you do that. It saves these tips quite a bit because then you're not having to, to take that guesswork. If you pull it up too high, they're gonna arc on itself. You can do that a couple times on these things, they're gonna burn them out. Again, they're not cheap. They're about probably about 10 bucks for both of these things. Uh, and if one of them fails, typically the other one's gonna fail uh, as well. Okay. What other questions do we have? Pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. I mean, I know you guys didn't do it. I did it, but you know, it's, this stuff is, you know, the plasma is not, it, it's not hard. It's, it really is. You can, you can come into this shop and you could, you know, cut something with your hand, never have done it before. Um, the only thing is, I'm, you know, you might need some help setting some of the stuff up, but once it's there, and you just go through and, and it's done and, and you've got your cut and, and it's super, super simple. So 